Welcome, welcome to Ramud Yom Shir. We are now learning Maseches Kiddushin, Daf Samech Gimel Omud Aleph, top of the page. This shir is the Ilu Nishmas of Imoyer Menachem Ben Akiva, Ilu Nishmas Rus Bashalom Sar Bas Moshe, Aviva Bas Moshe, the Rafuas, the Rafuas, Zina Chayim Bas Gil Roche, the Chana Batzima, Or Efoel Ben Dania. And for that sloch of Klali so in such difficult times, may we all see Simchat very soon. Of course, Zoom, the Refuas, Zoom, Ben Chan Chan Chan. Okay, so basically, we are learning as follows. The sugi we're holding is Dovol Shalom We are now in the topic of Dovol Shalom A person, generally speaking, according to most opinions, a person cannot act uh, Kiddushin, you cannot create Hekdesh, Maiser, Kenyan on things that are not Baloilam, things that did not yet come to the world. Excuse me. Yeah. Basically, there were, Abai said that there are three opinions, there are three to know who believe that a person may relate to, may act upon something that did not yet come to the world. We're not necessarily talking always about something that's completely hypothetical and futuristic. We're talking about things that are not yet, let's say, halachically ready. Yeah. For example, a woman is not yet Jewish, cannot be Miskadesh. He's telling a gentle woman, Harat Mukadeshly, when you will convert. She's in the world, but her ability to be Miskadesh is not, right? Or fruit. You have fruit in the garden. You say when the fruit will be picked, right? Which is very possible. Then, once I pick them, I want the Meister and Truma to apply from now retroactively. Okay? That's basically the story. There are three opinions who believe the Dovo Shalob Aloilam, things that will happen in future, you can already work with them now. These opinions were, first of all, as Abai said, the first one was Rabbi Elezo ben Yaakov. Rabbi Elezo ben Yaakov is what we said before about the Meister. Yeah, I can take Meiser from things that are still attached to the ground and even things that are not grown enough or not fully grown in the halachic sense of the word. I can already say now, when they grow, I'm giving Meiser now. Second opinion was Rabbi, there was Rebbe, the Tanya. Oh, now we're up to Rebbe. That's the second opinion of somebody who believes that Dovr Shlom can be dealt with now. The Tanya. Lotasgir Eved Eladoinov. I looked into this mitzvah yesterday and today. Do not deliver, do not frame, so to speak. Don't give back, don't hand, hand over a running slave, an escaping slave to his master that's running after him. When is that true? Well, we're talking here about, according to Rashi in the Chumash, and according to the Rambam, La Alocho, yeah? <laughs> if an Eved Kenaini is owned by, even by a Jewish person, even by a Jewish person, but they live in Chutz Laaretz, and that applies even today. It doesn't apply, apply to the Halacha, but conceptually in Halacha, Eved Knaini can apply. So that Eved Knaini is owned by a nice from family in Mansi, New York, and he's running to Eretz Yisrael because he wants to throw a mashma from the Targum Yoinuson. He wants more. He wants to live in Eretz Yisrael for the good reason. He's not trying to uh, bum around in Tel Aviv. Tfut, tfut, tfut. He wants to be in Yeshiva in Yerushalayim. He wants to be in Eretz Yisrael because it's a holier place. And the master, the next flight from JFK, comes the master, is running after the, you belong to me. Come back home right now, you cheeky boy. So Beisdin supports the Eved. If the Eved wants to live in Eretz Yisrael, we support that. Now, I, the master, bought him for good money. So we make sure that he gets paid. We tell the Eved to... <laughs> We tell the Evid once you, Evid, you make some of your own money, installments, we manage somehow that the master will be paid, but the Evid has the right to stay in El Tesoil, even if the Evid is Kraini and even if the master is Jewish. Okay? That's the classical uh, explanation chat of the mitzvah. And based in are in charge of that. Okay? Fine. That's one. Now, Rebbe Oimer. Rebbe gives a different interpretation. <laughs> And he says as follows, What does that mean? Let's say there is a slave liberator. He comes to the south because he's from the north. Yeah, he's from Abraham Lincoln people. 
and he wants to liberate the slave. So what does he tell the master? He tells the master, I'm buying the slave off you. Uh, yeah, I'm giving you good money, and I'm buying the slave. What's his plan? He wants to free the slave once. Yeah, once the slave is being born, he wants to free the slave. Okay, so now, based, but sometimes, you know, what can happen. I'm saying this now before we continue the sugya. Sometimes the Yetzirahara creeps in. And sometimes that liberator will say, ah, hold it, you know, <laughs> you're owned by me now. I bought you for myself, right? And now I want you to wash the dishes and change the babies and it's Erev Pesach. Yeah, and what? I'm going to turn off the microphone now. <laughs> right. The kids are, the kids are my set. So now let's say the, the new liberator will say, you're my slave now. I'm not freeing you. He'll trick the Eved. So now based in are supposed to be on the side of the Eved. But what do you mean? If he bought the Eved really legally, the Eved belongs really to who? To the new liberator, because now he's his Eved of the second guy. So says Echidami, how could that be then? Omar Nachman Baritzchak Kigoin, the Kosav Lei, the new owner slash liberator, he wrote an affidavit, a star to the Eved, saying, Lekshikachacha, Oh, he made a precondition. He preconditioned it. And he said, when I buy you, when I will buy you, the second I buy you, let's say I'm going to buy you in a week's time from now, I'm planning it in advance. The liberator and the slave are sitting together. The liberator says, I will buy you off that uh, horrible owner yeah, now, in a week's time. When you will be bought by me, you will be retroactively free, and you'll you'll be self-owning, self-owned from now. Yeah, retroactively. And now, where's based in the story? Where's the love? Let's say he still lies to him. Let's say that liberator still holds the Eved. Then based in say, eh, that's unfair. Based in supports the Eved, right? Based in says, no, excuse me, mister, you are his owner, but you yourself said that once you become the owner, automatically, he'll be liberated from you. The second you own him, the second after that, he'll be free, Lemafrea. And that's what we support, and that's what we do. Based in stands by the side of the Eved. Yeah, we are, in this case, we support the underdog. Now, what does it have to do with Dovash Labaloilam? Of course, because when he said to him a week ago, when you will be my Eved, when I will buy you from who? From your owner, then what? Then retroactively from now, you're free. Who says the owner wants to wants to sell him? Maybe this Evid is an amazing Evid and he wouldn't sell him for $10 million. He's whatever. He's doing very hard, uh, very amazing hair of Pesach work, yeah? It's not up to you. And yet, and yet, Rebbe believes that we do work with that. We believe in, we believe in working with the future even if there's a side obstacle in the way. Because if it happens, it happens. If everything goes well and the owner will give, will give money to the liberator, liberator will own him, everything will go well. And therefore, Rebbe is on the team of the people who say, Davos Labaloilom is Shaiv, is Kaiv. That's case number two. Now comes the third one, Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir is famous. Rabbi Meir, we saw also in other Masechdas, Rabbi Meir believes in Davos Labaloilom. The Tanya, it says, this is, by the way, a repetition of our Mishnah. The first part is going to be Mamish, uh, the word, I think, almost word for word from our Mishnah. A man tells a woman, after I'll convert, after you convert, either he or she are not Jewish. After I will be a free man, after I'll yeah, be released, yeah, I'll be a regular Jew. Right now he's an Evid Knaini. After you get free. After your husband dies, yeah? When your husband dies, retroactively, you'll be my wife. After your sister, who happens to be my wife, after she dies, I'll take you. Not I'll take you. I'm taking you now. The once his sister, i.e., my wife, will die, retroactively, you'll be my wife, yeah? Because then it will be allowed. Right now, you are held by Yibum. You need chalitza or yibum. Hopefully, your yovim will do chalitza. Then we'll be a free bird. And already from now, mekudeshes, ain't a mekudeshes. 
just like our Mishnah said. So does the Brisa say, no, Eina Mikudeshes, why Eina Mikudeshes? All these conditions are uh, castles in the air. Yeah, who said he's going to die? Who said they'll, who said they'll convert? It's not up to you, the conversion. Even though there are foreign forces such as death or gear, they're not up to you. Rabbi Meir says Mekudeshes. Rabbi Meir believes the Dovash Labaloilom. You can work with because it's not Mamish Castles in the air. It's an option. It's a bet. It's a speculation. If it works, it works. I can tell you if I win the lottery, I'll give you half. You wish. <laughs> yeah, but Lemaisa, right? If the Chula the Chula. Now, Rabbi Yochanan, the Machlokes continues. Rabbi Yochanan and Sandler Oimer Ein Mekudeshes. Yeah. Rabbi Yochanan and Sandler supports Tanakama, who says she's not Mekudeshes. Rabbi Yudah Nosi Oimer Mekudeshes. Rabbi Yudah Nosi is on the side of Rabbi Meir that believes that she is Mekudeshes. Dovol Shalom Aloylam does work. But Rabbi Yudah Nosi has a reservation regarding Rabbi Meir, regarding Rabbi Meir's opinion. And he says as follows. Umatam Omru Eina Mekudeshes. Why is it that they said Eina Mekudeshes? Meaning, how do you know? Why is it that in some of these cases, soon we'll see two cases, Rabbonon said that the woman is not Mekudesh. Really, to work with the future is fine. But from a reason we'll see right now, two of these cases, a woman is not Mekudesh. Mishum Eva, because of we want to prevent animosity. What does that mean? As you all smile when we mention these cases, there are two cases here that don't sound very kosher. And that is what? Sounds like uh, some, uh, whatever, entertainment idea. And that is what? A man tells a woman, I like to Kodeshesli when your husband dies. Right? That's not exactly... I don't think Sholem there is amazing and flourishing. So now let's say her husband finds out. If her husband finds out that she's already kind of potential married to another guy, I do not think that would increase the Sholem Bais. Shall we write a poll? Would you like your wife to... No, Chas Shalom. Yeah? In other words, that, that creates Eva. Same thing the other way. If he says to her, when my wife, which is your sister, will die, oh, you're already mine from now. Let's already plan the future after her death. I do not think she'll be happy camper if that happens. So because of that, Rabbanon said, these cases are a little bit too risque and are not exactly encouraging Shalom Bais. Let's leave them out of the picture. But other cases, after I convert, very kosher is in the conversion process. After you convert, after I convert, after I get free, after you get free, all very good. That does work because really Rabbi Yudah Nasi supports, conceptually, he supports the opinion of Rabbi Meir that the future is now. Very good. So how many people, how many Tanoim are there in Abaye's group? How many? There are three Tanoim who hold the same thing. Rabbi Ezer ben Yaakov, and we had Rabbi, and we had Rabbi Meir. But wait a second. But now we just said now that Rabbi Meir has a supporter called Rabbi Danasi. So there are four. Three plus one is four. You know that? So now, Frank Digmore, Benachshov Nami Rabbi Danasi. Why don't you also count Benachshov? Why did you consider and count Rabbi Danasi as the fourth one? Answers the Gemara, and we all know that. But this is a source. I know Rabbi. I know Rabbi Danasi. Ay 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 ay. It's the same person. <laughs> He's really saying the same opinion twice. He's wearing two hats. He has a different, you know, uh, you know, alias. You know, he has a different name. Yeah. And therefore, it's the same person. We don't count four. It's really three. Rebbe was Rebbe Danos. It's the same person. Okay. Himela, yeah, there are four, there are four uh, issues, but only three people. Why don't we also count Rabbi Akiva? And this is a whole new world here with Rabbi Akiva. The Gemara is suggesting, wondering, why don't you also mention Rabbi Akiva to be what? On the team of Dovo Shalom Aloylam does work. Let's see. Before we continue, this is actually not a price. It's a Mishnah. I saw it this morning, I promise, in the Dorim. Before we start the Mishnah, let's just remind ourselves of what we know about the Dorim. Can a man break the vow of his wife? Many times, yes. Not always. But if it has to do with her health, her well-being, or marriage physically, or to do with him and her, yes, yeah, she's not either to do things against him, things that will affect him, is, has the right as a husband to just break her vow and say your vow is not a vow, your nether is not a nether. It's not a very bad thing to to, uh, to make a nether, 
But a husband, because women tend to do that, it says, and a husband has the right, maybe the duty, to break his wife's nador. Break meaning to annul, to annul. To annul his wife's nadoing. Okay? Introduction number two. A woman, halachically, before today's age of coil life and feminism, <laughs> two things changed the world, feminism and coil lifestyle, <laughs> some better than other. The classical way was in the Torah, a husband supports his wife, right? But the wife also, she on her side, Midorobonon, is mechuyav to give him her salary, right? He's supporting her, and she too has to, she can't give the money to herself, he's working hard, also to, to prevent animosity. You know what husbands always say, I work so hard the whole day, wherever, in the city, in Manhattan, in Yerushalayim, I work the whole day. She has that job on the side. She should also contribute to the family's uh, kitty. And she should give me her money, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay? Having those two ideas in mind, now we can, right? We can. Rabbana said, she gets, she gets supported by him, and she has to give her salary automatically, halachically, her salary goes to him, him, the family. Now, that's how it goes. That is in Subas Memzain, I think. Netanya. Now says, Rabbi, says the Mishnah as follows. It's the Tanan. That woman, once upon a time, now this is not a real case, Ellen, yeah? This is a theoretical case. What would be if a woman would say to the husband, not even to her husband, she says to herself, I assume quite angrily, I am noidel, I make a vow that oisa lepicha, which means all, all of what I do, shani oisa, all the work that I do, all the salary that I'm gaining, yeah, she sews dresses. All the dresses that I sew and I get money, they are not for your mouth. They will not go into the mouth of my husband. Uh, that will not go to him. Making a nether, by the way, nether, you have to understand, people get confused about nether. Nether does mean I will do, I won't do, usually. Usually that's shvua. Koino means when I take an object and I madir, I basically like remove it, like hekdesh, from everybody else's or from some people. Let's say... Let's say this is my phone, and let's say I don't like uh, Chaim Yanko. And I say, I don't know any Chaim Yankov, by the way. I say, Koinom, this phone from Chaim Yanko. This phone is, so to speak, out of touch. Koinom is a korbon, like a korbon from Chaim Yanko. If Chaim Yanko touches my phone, he's over a terrible user. Right? I'm Kilu, excluding this, I'm setting it apart from him. So that woman said, my my say a dime. The salary I'm making, the money I'm making from sewing the dresses, what about that? Removed halachically from my husband. I madir this from my husband. Says Tanakama, en tzarech lahofer. Haha, lady, you're talking nonsense, excuse me. The husband doesn't have to be mefer. There are two reasons. Let's say now the reason which, one reason is because she's mechuyev. She has to give him that money. Nobody's asking her. Just, yeah, Nedor in, in general cannot go against Halacha. Since Halacha says, you lady, you have to give him the money that you earn, Mimela, you can't work against it. Nedorim can't annul Halacha. Yeah? It's like saying, I'm neither that, uh, whatever, to eat on Yom Kippur. You can't do that. Now, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says, Yofer, yes, he does have to do the Haforo. He has to annul and he can he can and has to, I mean, if he wants to, he doesn't have to, but he can annul the vow. Why? Shema tadif all of yeser menaroi loi. Interesting. In other words, when we said that a woman is mechir to give the money to the husband, surprise, surprise, it's not all the money. There's a certain, you know, ceiling, a certain, you know, uh, maximum amount of money that she's mechir to give him, which is equivalent to five sloim, yeah? Mishkal Chamesh Loim, or Ten Sloim in Yehuda, but if she does more than that, let's say she's not a seamstress, let's say she's a top-notch lawyer. So she doesn't have to give him all her salary. She has to give him the amount prescribed by Chazal, Chamesh Sloim, but let's say she does more than that. More than that, she doesn't have to give him, she can keep it to herself. And now, that's why says Rabbi Akiva, excuse me, maybe next month, she will make more than the minimum she has to give you, right? And then if you will enjoy it, if you'll see it in your bank account, or you will eat the food that you bought with that money, with the extra money, ah, the extra money is something, 
that she's not mechuyif to give him, and her nether therefore applies to the extra, to the minimum that she has to give him, nether does not affect. But the top, yeah, let's say it's 5,000 shekels. 5,000 shekels, let's say, I'm just picking a number. A woman is mechuyif to give her husband every month, she doesn't have to work reluctantly. If she works, let's say, every 5,000 shekels, she has to give him, right? So the 5,000, hey, who cares? You're talking nonsense, girl. I'm taking the 5,000. Chazal told me I can take it. I don't care about your dorm. I don't have to annul it. But let's say she'll make next month, she'll have a good month, she'll make 8,000, yeah, for whatever she does. Ah, those 3,000 are, she's not mechuyev to give you. And let's say she will give you, or she'll bring home the money, she'll bring home the, I don't know, the product she bought with that money, and you'll eat them you're running into trouble, because maybe that comes from the extra 3,000, which her nether does apply to. Says Rabbi Kiva, be on the safe side, and if you don't want to avoid trouble, you should, yes, be made for the nether, do annul her nether, because sometimes the nether applies to something which is not mechoy, the nether can, can, can take effect. The one thing we say, wait a second, what does that to do with the Tugiv Davos Shlabaloy Oh, it has to do very much. One second, please, Baruch Let's say she's about to enter the the law firm <laughs> or the suing uh, whatever uh, company, wherever she works in the sweatshop or wherever she works, and she says, anything I will make today, anything I will make, I might deal my husband from that. Who cares? That's Dovah Shabbat She's noider, neither is like Hekdesh. I'm setting it aside apart, like Mukta, like Hekdesh. The money I will, are you a, prophet, are you a prophetess lady? And even if you know you will, how do you? Yeah, it's something you don't have in your hands yet. So you're telling me, Rabbi Akiva, who is really concerned about it, that that future business she will gain, she will get, she will make, she'll earn, that she can be noidel. And by the way, that could be another reason why Tanakama wasn't worried about it. I told you two reasons. Maybe Tanakama can say, I don't care about her nonsense. She's talking about futures. We don't believe in the future, right? Mashaken, according to Rabbi Akiva, yes. Oh. So why do you say there are only three people? Let's have another chosh of a member to our club, Rabbi Akiva, here it comes. Why won't Rabbi Akiva join the club of people who believe in saying something now about the future and it will really take effect, right? The Chor Rabbi Akiva believes in that, yeah? That, the, yeah? that her salary, her earnings, her business, already now, she's saying, will be also the husband. Rabbi Akiva takes it very seriously. And says the Gemara, no, we learned about it. Uh, the Gemara already explained that idea of the woman noider in a different way. We're talking here about a case of a woman who said the following. Let me, let me translate that to English. The woman didn't say, I madir my salary. I madir my future earnings, which my boss will give at the end of the month, or my client will give me a million dollars at the end of the month. She is a lawyer. El am I, what's she saying? I'm saying, I madir my hands. Look, look, you see my hands? My hands are sewing the dress. My hands are writing contracts. My hands are doing their shetel machine. My hands. I am madir my hands to Hashem, and I'm excluding my husband from whatever my hands do. Ah. The yadayim is no barlam. The hands are here. She's smart. She didn't say, I madir from the my say yadayim, from what my hands will produce, will create. I madir my husband from what? My hands themselves. So anything coming from my hands, which makes money, those things will automatically be out of realm from the husband. And that's why it works. So Rabbi Kiva really doesn't believe in the future. Rabbi Kiva does not belong to the group of Dovo Shlobo because the way, and Achinami, Rabbi Kiva would agree that if she says, the salary, if she says, I madir this husband, <laughs> I madir him from, I madir my, my, sayadai, my salary, my cash I'm getting from the employer or the client, that I madir, it won't work. You don't have the cash here. What are you talking about? You're talking about the future? What are you talking about? Science fiction? No. Mashenkin, if she said, my hands are mudar from my husband, the hands are right here. Now, in the hands themselves, there are two levels, Rashi says. <laughs> There's the hands for the minimum and the hands from above minimum. And Rabbi Kiva is concerned about that. But that's all within the hands. The hands vis-a-vis -vis the minimum salary, which we don't care about. The hands vis-a-vis -vis above, the more than the necessary, the sir, 
their uh, salary, yeah, the over the minimum. That and Achinami were concerned about, according to Be'akiva, and she should really, uh, he should really annul it because he may run into the risk of enjoying her extra Maisei dime, which is not Mechuyot to give him, and the nether applies to that. That is Rabbi Akiva. You say that? Are you happy? Baruch Hashem. If you're happy, I'm also happy. Baruch Hashem. Says the Heilige Mishnah. That Mishnah is a tricky one. No, it's tricky. It's a very, very easy Mishnah to read. And it's a very, very uh, simple Mishnah. And many of you may ask at the end of the Mishnah, what's the Chiddush? Sounds like the Mishnah is not giving me any new information. <laughs> because we don't see the trap at the end of the... Yeah. Okay, it says the Mishnah. A man tells a woman, I know, lady, you have a bit of a trouble with the tax authorities. That never happens. It's thanks, Tom, whatever. Yeah, you have issues with me, tax authority, city hall, the Kule. You know, I'm a sleek talker. I know how to talk people into, you know, helping you. I'm an Askin. You know, it's an Askin. Have you lived there long enough? Yeah, oh, you have it in England too? Very good. But kids are, I'm a macher. I can talk to uh, Greenberg. I can talk to whoever. I can talk to Bitoch Lumi. They'll be on your side. But hey, I charge money. I do it for money. But you know what? I like you, lady. I read Mekudesh Esli. Al menas shadam relach l'shilton. On condition, your Mekudesh is to me, on condition that I will talk on your behalf to the authorities. Or, Ve'esi imech kepoyan. I know that your house needs some good paint. I'm a Kaddish you now on condition that tomorrow I'll come to your house and I'll do some work in your house. Okay, so what's the story? If he fulfilled the condition, she's Mekudesh. He spoke to the city hall. He spoke to the city, to the mayor. He spoke to the, he, he did the work in, his, in her house. Mekudesh, she's Mekudesh. He fulfilled the condition. If he did not fulfill the condition, she's not Mekudesh. Right? So, by the way, there's a mechlokis reshoinim. What happens if he spoke to the mayor and it didn't work? <laughs> the mayor still demands uh, Arnona, yeah? So the mechlokis, uh, there are different opinions on reshoinim, whether it's about the exertion, it's about the work, or about the result. And that's, that's another one. I'm asking a question. I'm, I'm asking a question. Rebona de Kulanma, what's the Kiddush? It's so simple, of course. They made a condition. If you fulfill the condition, yes. If no, no. We've seen that already too many times, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you? I can read your mind, Ellen, you know. Says the Gemara, my mind reader became in my old age. Says the Gemara, oh, ho, 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 ho. Omar Shlakish, says the Shlakish, I'm qualifying the Mishnah to be saying, not, not a big uh, ukimta, I'm just saying the Mishnah spoke in the case. Oh, says the Shlakish as follows. What's a common denominator between the two, ish, the two noim in this Mishnah as opposed to everything else we've seen so far in the Masechta. We're talking now about a person who's giving a service. He's, yeah, he's giving her service. He's not giving her money, or he has money, or has land. He's giving her a service. He's lobbying for her. He's doing some poil work for her. Yeah, that's it. Says Lakish, you know when her Mishnah can work? Only if he gave her the money now. He gave her Shove Puta. He gave her what we usually do as a ring. He gave her the pruta, and the sachar, the work he's doing is only a condition. What is the shakish coming to exclude? Tell me honestly, when we first read the Mishnah, did you think that he's Mekadosh her with a ring, or is he Mekadosh her with the work he's doing and its value? What did you think? You thought with the work. I'm so happy. The shakish says to everybody here, I'm on your side. The shakish says, no. The idea is, if it was Mekadosh a nice traditional way, nice shiny ring, and he said on condition that tomorrow or next week or next month, I will talk to Greenberg for you, or I'll talk to Bituach Lumi, right? Then it's good. Excluding what? And the Gemara says, Ube loy. But let's say he told her, I am a you with the value of me speaking on your behalf. You know how much I charge for talking in uh, on behalf of people for Bituach Lumi? 300 shekels an hour. You know, I'll speak to, for, on your behalf for one hour, can be Kiddush to me with the 300 shekels. So Shlakish says, no, that doesn't work. Wow, that's a Kiddush. So Shlakish says that you cannot be Mekadish a woman. Right now, we are not sure why. 
right now we think that women cannot be miskadeshes with service giving. Although service giving, service is worth money, but you cannot be miskadesh with it. I'm already telling you now that that's not true, <laughs> but that's what we think now. Yeah, I don't want to break it. I sometimes, I have a, one of my disadvantages. I, I tend to jump the gun. I don't want to repeat my mistake. Right now, the Gemara thinks that although a lawyer, <laughs> uh, easy 500 shekels an hour, right? I'll do some law service for you. Yeah, 500 shekels. No, he cannot be Mikadosh with that. And obviously the question is, first of all, why? And secondly, look at the Gemara. The Atanya, law, is that so? Look at the Brisa. I'll show you Brisa that says otherwise. Look what the Brisa says. A man tells a woman, remember yesterday, I actually was your donkey, I was a very loyal donkey driver, or donkey, whatever it's called, yeah? Or Bakaron, I set you, I took you with, a, with like a, like a new, no, a, a cart, a chariot, a new, no, a, a wagon, the kids are wagon, a wagon driver, the kids are taxi. Yeah, I drove you in a taxi yesterday, I took you in my car yesterday, you know much as a taxi drive, whatever, 50 shekels, you owe me the money. You owe me the money. Oi, besvina, or in a boat, ain't a mekudeshes. Why isn't she mekudeshes? And that, by the way, is agreed by everyone. I want to know now if you really have good memory. She owes the money from yesterday. On Sunday, you took her around his car all the way from Beth Shemesh, from the airport to Beth Shemesh, 40 minutes, how much it's about 200 at least, right? 200 shekels, yeah? Uh, more, yeah. You owe me 200 shekels of yesterday, lady. <clears throat> Remember that? You're such a nice girl, you know, we had a nice schmooze on the way. Sorry. Yeah. And then what? And then Aret Mukudesh Lee with yesterday's taxi ride. Why doesn't it work? And that's, by the way, for sure not in the cards. Why? Shh. Rabbits and Ellen's wife is going to get a lot of Nachas notes. It's a loan. It's Milve, and Milve is not Mukudesh. It's important to remember now again and have it set in stone. A woman is not Mukudesh with Milve. Why? Because they didn't give her anything. When I'm moichel to you, the money that's in your pocket, you have 200 shekels in your pocket, right? You're supposed to give me, and I forgive it, I forgo, I waver it, that's not kiddushin. Beautiful. However, let's now say the opposite story. First, wadlan. It is now Sunday, and I know that tomorrow you're planning on me taking you on a donkey, or in the on the whatever in the koan in the not chair in wagon wagon is more normal yeah wagon or in the boat I'm a boat skipper a couch a proper couch oi besfina or I'm a boat skipper yeah I, I'll take you in my boat mekudeshes oh so what do you see if the planet in advance before the milvi was created tomorrow I'll do service for you I'll drive you around in my nice taxi my Tesla around to the airport to the Meiron so what. And I'm saying this in advance. She is Mekudesh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So that's against the Shlakish. You see that a man can be Mekudesh a woman with, as long as it's planned in advance, with a service he'll give her tomorrow. It's not giving her money. He's giving her a service, which is worth money. Ah, Maybe you'll be smart with me and you'll say, Maybe here too, we're talking about a guy who gave her already money and that is only a side condition. And Mekudesh with the money, not with the service. On condition, they'll take you tomorrow in the car, like any other condition, a like condition that I have land. Says the Gemara, you can't say that. But b'schar k'omar, it says no. It says in the Braisa, b'schar. I'm a Kaddish you for the schar, for the money, for the salary, for the fare, for the taxi fare, for the boat fare. With that, I'm a Kaddish you. That's 100% against what Rosh Lakish said. You see, you can be a with the money. I'll give you tomorrow. I'm not giving you money. I'm going to give you Shove Keset. I'm giving you a boat ride. The Oid Tanya, and again another Brisa that again seems to be against what Rishlakish said. It says Shev imi betzavta v'kadosh lecho. Very interesting. A woman says to a man, "Sit with me and keep me company." It says Rashi, "Shelo yeshev yichidi." As you want someone to keep me company, okay? And that's worth money. Interesting, yeah. You can pay people to just be with you, yeah, like a counselor. No, not counselor. Some to have chevra. I'll pay you just to be with me. A woman says to the man, "V'kadosh lecho." Yeah, you charge 100 shekels an hour for just being around. I'll be, I'll be mitzkadesh for you with that. That's a famous one. Sure, I kept quoting. Or remember this more? I kept quoting it all the whole time. She says to him, uh, make a shtick, you know, uh, entertain me. Entertain me. Dance in front of me. His name is, I don't know, a famous singer. 
sing a song for me, and with that, yeah, that will be your kiddushin. Or I want you to build for me a building that looks just like this one. So what do we say? Shomim. Now we have to assess, assess and estimate and evaluate. Let's take the singer, the entertainer. If the singing, I don't think if anybody wants me to sing in front of me, it's Pruta. My singing is less than Shove Pruta. But let's say she wants Yaakov Shweki to sing. He's married. I don't know. An unmarried guy. I don't know. Some uh, other singer that's famous. Yeah. And she wants him to sing for her. It's Shove a lot of Prutas. So we say that if the singer will sing in front of her, and that is valuable, he's a guy who takes, uh, I don't know, 3,000 shekels uh, an hour. Yeah. Then what? Or even. Even one shekel an hour, yeah, for the song. Mekudeshes, the kids are what do you see? That if they plan in advance that he'll give her service, she is Mekudeshes for the value of the service. That's again against what Rashlaki said. Maybe again you'll try to claim and maybe twist it. No, no, no. He gave a Shove Pruta. She's not Mekudeshes with a song. She's not Mekudeshes with a boat ride. She's Mukadeshit with money, nice traditional ring money. And the other thing, ah, just a condition. Says, well, you can't say that. The <laughs> It says you evaluate the song. What do you care? If the song is not what you, what, is not the Prutus Kiddushin, it's time a condition. Even if the guy sounds like a dead frog croaking, who cares? She said, you sing for me. That's all, right? What well, should make a difference? We see that the song or the building or the bus uh, or the taxi ride or the boat ride. Those things have to be watched over Pruta. Mashma, that they are the ones that should be Skadeshes. Give to the Shlakish. Oi, 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 oi. This is all the two prices seem to work against the Shlakish. Let's repeat the question. Let's summarize the question. The Shlakish, again, we misunderstood the Shlakish big time, but at the moment we think, we think erroneously, that the Shlakish explained our Mishnah not like you guys were thinking. I'm happy you thought that way. The Shlakish says no. She's not miskadeshes with the service of painting your house for Pesach or talking to the Uriah for you. No. She's miskadeshes with a nice, traditional, Jewish, pruta, ring, ay, ay, ay. And the condition, I'll talk to the Uriah. Oh, tradition, condition. Mashma, why did the Shlakish talk like that? He's coming to tell me that if you say to a woman, hare at miskadeshes li, with the service I'll give you tomorrow, it doesn't work. So first of all, I don't know why. But more disturbing is, we see two prices that speak against Rosh Lakish. Two prices say that you may be Mekadish a woman with a service. So what's going on here? That's a crescendo of the question. And Rosh Lakish will come out beautifully out of this. And this is, by the way, what we spoke about in Daphne Ches. It's a little bit of a different concept. And I worked, I broke my head today about it, although I've seen it in a few places in Shas. And I saw Toysus Reed. I'm telling you now that today I saw the Toysus Reed and the Toysus Reed saved my day. Omer l'chor l'shlakish, answers l'shlakish. Hai tana boro, the b'raisa which you attack me from, that b'raisa sova thinks, eina l'schirus ela lebasoif. I'm not even translating. The tana didan sova, yeshna l'schirus metchil avat soif. So if this is Chinese, first of all, it's not Chinese for you, because you saw it before, but let me explain. There are two, there are actually three ways, two of the three ways to explain how is it exactly that if I go into a taxi, don't get sensitive or personal over here, yeah? I get into a taxi and I didn't get anything physical, right? And then what? At the end of the ride, he's telling me uh, 100 pounds, please. 100 pounds from one end of London to the other? Yeah, at least. For Ellen, 200. So now, let's say, why is it that I have to give you the money? Because you gave me service. Yeah, but let's define it. Let's break it to details. According to the Brysa, before we talk about Kiddushin, talking in general, after I receive the entire service, when I'm satisfied, and I, you're not a poil, and I'm working per minute, yeah? Even if you take charge per minute, but I want you to take, I want you to take me from Golden's Green all the way to Heathrow, yeah? If I don't get to Heathrow Terminal 5, I'm not satisfied, right? When do I begin to owe you money? When I'm in Heathrow, with my suitcases off, yeah? Then I owe you the, how much? Close green Heathrow. 70 pounds. So then 70 pounds. I owe you 70 pounds. I I owe you 70 pounds only at the end of the journey. Only then I begin to I don't even what do you mean owe you? I got a product. I received the product. Just like people receive uh 
I don't know, a nice, uh, I don't know, uh, shirt and they pay 70 pounds. So too, if I got the service, I got a product and at the end of the full product, then I got that, I have to pay 70 pounds. That's one way of understanding it. And then it's a price. I'm not yet connecting it to Kiddushin because I want to go nice and slow. Our Tana believes that, I'm using the example of taxi on purpose because it's a good example. What happens in a taxi? Sometimes it's a set price and sometimes, yeah, the taxi meter is ticking, yeah? And depends on that. Oh, the other opinion believes that when a person gives me service and, you know, a lawyer is talking on my behalf to someone for an hour, so every minute the debt accumulates. Once I enter the taxi, yeah, tick, 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 I owe you a cent, another cent, uh, a penny, a pound, another pound, another pound. It slowly, the debt accumulates with every meter you advance me and every press on the gas pedal, I owe you more and more and more. It's an accumulative debt. Ah, you're beginning to smell the coffee. Says Leshlakish, don't attack me from the Mishnahs. Do me a favor. The Brises are right and I'm right because I learned our Mishnah one way and the Brises disagreed with the Mishnah. Now let's explain everything. As Ellen very, very nicely said before, we have a situation, as we know, that's an axiom. It's not an axiom, it's, it's logical. That, that's known already that a woman cannot be miscarriage with a milve, right? You can't be miscarriage with a woman. You owe me money, lady, like yesterday's bus ride. Uh, stay with the money. To say to a woman, stay with the money that's really yours now and don't give it to me that you owe me, that you cannot do. Oh, so now, when, yeah, what did the Brysa, why was the Brysa so pro the idea of Mekadish with the service? Of course you can be Mekadish with the service conceptually. Elamai depends how you define the payment of the service. The Brysa believes that when I say on Sunday to a girl, you know, I'm a nice taxi driver, are at Mekudeshesli, in what? In tomorrow's bus ride. Tomorrow's bus ride is like a product. You'll only owe it to me at the end of the journey. And you know what? By the end of the journey, and the Tosas Lid says, at the end of the journey has to tell her again, Arat Mukudesh Yeah? In other words, before you even create a debt, before I give you the product, which is the end of the journey, at that happy moment already, we decided the day before, you Mukudesh is to me, and that's okay. It's like I decided on Sunday, on Monday, I'll give her a box, a product. That product is called service. Mashiach, and I agree. I know that, and that's what the Brysa thinks. However, the Mishnah, the Mishnah says it doesn't work. You know why? The Mishnah views it as it's an accumulative debt. In other words, when you enter the taxi, according to that opinion, you know what happens? Every push on the pedal and every meter through the streets of London, it's as if, I'm talking strong now on purpose, it's as if the driver is lending you money. The driver is lending you a pound and another pound and another pound into your pocket. And at the end of the journey, you're paying him back 70 pounds. Yes, yes. That's because the debt accumulated. Ah, so what's, who cares the guy saying in advance? So what if it's in advance? On Sunday, the guy told her, tomorrow I will take you in the taxi and you won't have to pay. What's he really telling her? Tomorrow, not, let's say the journey takes from 9 till 9.40. Let's say 40 minutes, yeah? From 9 to 9.40, I will slowly lend you and lend you and lend you and lend you. And you will not have to pay me. That's bad news. Because it's still Milva. Even though it's before the action happened, you're telling her, tomorrow I will lend you money, which you'll have in your pocket. She has in her pocket the money. When you're in the taxi, you're sitting, you make sure you have the credit card or the cash to pay at the end. That cash, it's killed the driver lent it to you. But if he lent it to you, it's Milve, which belongs to the woman. And at the end of the ride, they'll tell her with a valiant, uh, nightly smile, oh, that's okay. I let Mukodesh sleep. It's too late. What are you really telling her? Stay with the money. Stay with the money. That's bad news. That's a shot. Again, I'm repeating. Again, I'm repeating again. Says Lashlakish, I'm right. And the Bryce is right. I have nothing against, conceptually, I have nothing against Mikadosh with a service. The problem is, according to the Mishnah, the reason the Mishnah said what it said is because the Mishnah views service giving as a slow process of you enter the taxi, you enter the boat, I started working in your house with a paintbrush, every, every how do you say, streak, stroke, stroke, every stroke of paint, you lady owe me money, which you're keeping in your pocket. If at the end of the, your, your entire house now looks shiny and new and pristine for Pesach, yeah, it's bad, Sam, I lent you money, lent, 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 and now you don't have to pay. Even if it was pre-planned, it doesn't help. We pre-planned yesterday, 
that I will lend you money and you will not pay me. It's still a loan. It doesn't make a difference it was pre-planned. But Sheinken, in the case of, not the case, but Sheinken, the Brysa, an exactly the same case, disagrees. The Brysa says no. The Brysa says no, no, no. When he will paint, when he'll talk to the mayor, when he'll drive her in the car, you know what's going to happen? It's not a debt. She doesn't owe him anything. She'll receive a product called taxi drive. Only at the end she'll have to pay for getting to Gatwick, to, to Heathrow. Then what? Then he'll already, then already plan the descent. With the product you will receive, but it's not an accumulative debt. Once it's not a debt, it's okay, it's not new. That's in general the idea. Now, Fred, okay, Fred Digmore, still, what was Doichek, what, so to speak, pushed Rishlakish to the corner to explain that our Mishnah is talking about believes in. Yes, that's here's an accumulative debt, Ubediovlo, and therefore he has to say that he gave her money for Kiddushin and the service is just a condition. What made Rishlakish say that? The Ritva explains that Rishlakish is really, at the end of the day, creating a Machlokis mission and the Brysa. Why? Why can't Rishlakish say that a mission is also like the Brysa? Rishlakish is the one who read the Brysa to the Mishnah to be against the Brysa. Omar Ovet, this isn't she say. Ovet says, no, our Mishnah was difficult for him, meaning there was something in the Mishnah, a duke in the Mishnah, that made Rosh Lakish say what he said. What is that? My area. My area, the Tani Almenas, Nitni Besachar. Ay, ay, ay. If you read the Mishnah very well, go back to the Mishnah, my friends. Please raise your eyes now to the beginning of the Mishnah. That's not far. Read again and see how Rosh Lakish is obviously right. Omer Li, Shart Mukodesh, the Almenas. What's Almenas? On condition. Oh, why did he say on condition? Why did the Mishnah say? Bishar. If the Mishnah believes that really, and we know now it's a touchy point, it's a question if you can be Mekadish with the service or not. If the Mishnah wants to go and, and be Mekadish strongly and boldly, the Mishnah should have said, Bishar, they'll take your rod. Bishar, they'll talk to the guy for you, to, to, to the mayor for you, right? On your behalf. The Mishnah didn't. The Mishnah said, on condition, hmm, avoiding the schar. Must be al menas on condition. This is not the sachar. You have law. You already gave her. Yeah, obviously, if you make a woman, al menas that I'll talk. Al menas I'll give you 200. Al menas I'll drive you. Clearly, he gave her money before. <laughs> Somewhere the money has to come. If not, if, if, the, if tomorrow's service is not the money, so where is the money? Must be the money was given out. Nicely ring on the finger, traditional and nice. And all this business of taking you tomorrow and talking tomorrow and taking us tomorrow, all that is what? That is just a condition. Why did the Mishnah say that? The Rishaki says, what you, what you bothered me about, that's exactly what bothered me too. Why did the Mishnah not tell me directly, you Mikadish, with, with, with the service? Because the Mishnah clearly believed in what? The Mishnah believed that giving service is a slow, slow and painful debt, debt, debt accumulation. And if you plan it in advance, it doesn't help. Because at the end of the day, you're saying to her, I'll lend you money tomorrow at 9 o'clock when you enter my taxi. At 9.40, then I'll forgive it. That, that's my mission debt. I don't care when it happens. That's why it doesn't work. I, the Brysa, don't attack me from the Brysa. The Brysa disagrees. That's a machlak is all over Shas. It's in Bova... Many places. I think Bova Basa I mean... Let's see, many places, many, many places. It's a machlekes that appears many times. Also here, we had it at Ches, not so long ago. And therefore, that's a machlekes between Rice and the Mishnah. Now, I am not going to continue the next Mishnah because I did not prepare it. And I don't want to talk about unprepared stuff. So, uh, yeah, we have nine minutes to uh, whatever, do whatever you want. Uh, maybe next week we'll have a little bit of Nagoda. Should I prepare something in Nagoda? Yeah, you want? Maybe 10 15 minutes on the Passover Hagoda. Yeah, we're celebrating the traditional Seder night. Thank you to everybody here in Avas Sholem Kolo. Thank you to everybody in YouTube and on tour anytime they watch us. Thank you for your support, love, and care of Torah. May Hashem bring us the Geula very, very soon.